<laughs> All right, uh, this, this story was published um, recently in Dark Sky Magazine. It is called Vacation. Way down in a bayou town, just for kicks, my love, you and me. We don't know this place. No infusion bars, vintage boutiques, or multi-level movie theaters. No yuppies or hipsters. People here lean too close and slur through log lips, and you can count their swampy teeth. Hey, be nice, you say. Watch the stereotypes. I know it, I know it, but even so, those were some teeth. I've got to hear like Zydeco, would die to hear it. So we drive to the roadhouse, out where the town trickles off into the weeds. We get there as the light bulbs on the sign blink out. Two women smoke in the dirt lot. Is the music really done for the night? I ask. A brunette, brunette with wadded tissue cheek says, Yeah, they gone home already, but come on back tomorrow, seven o'clock, they be at it again. But there is no tomorrow. There has to be another roadhouse, I say to you. Didn't we pass one? We pull over in a gas station parking lot, and while the rental Hyundai idles, we fish out our gadgets. The race is on to find an open roadhouse in Never Never. It's an android duel. You're Palm Pre. I'm Intercept. Our fingers fly blind across the QWERTY pads. Our throats glow icy blue. It takes forever, doesn't it, my love? There's no reception on this bayou, not enough radio towers. But we've got a lust for the down home, for the real. The Cajun soul is somewhere out on this bright night, somewhere beyond the bashed in trailers and the last of the kitchen hands rinsing out giant crawfish tubs. Somebody somewhere is scratching time on a washboard. So our fingers manipulate our mobile devices and the signals bounce into nothing. And would you look at that moon? It's big as a whale. We don't notice the dark man until he pops his head right through the open car window, folds his arms on the door. How y'all doing? We're great. Look at here. I don't mind if you gonna meet somebody in this lot. You know, it's all right. Just pull on over there, will you be a little out of sight? We're just trying to get online so we can find some music. Hey, I'm for real. I'm the manager of this place. I don't care if you black, blue, white, purple, or green. It's all right if you meet them. Just do it over there and sit out here where everybody's looking at you. He leans right in over your lap, my love, his moon face close to yours. You can count his swampy teeth if you want to. I ain't asking for money, he says. I got money. He pulls two ragged dollars out of his pocket. All I need is something to eat. Oh, here, we have a lot left from dinner. I hand over a styrofoam box of crawfish etouffee I couldn't finish. He runs his puffy pointer finger through the gelatinous remains. Nah, I don't eat this stuff, he says, handing it back. What's in that other box? <laughs> hey, man, you say, thanks for the advice, but we're going to take off. I'm not saying you can't stay, just wait for him over yonder. We're moving along now. Our car rolls slowly forward. Mr. Heebie-Jeebie stands back so as not to lose his head and arms, and we escape onto the street. Shit, that was creepy. Yeah, just a little. At least we know where to score meth. We laugh and hold hands, but my love, we don't know anything. We drive around town, rolling in and out of parking lots, pulling U-turns and slowing down wherever people are gathered, our radio quiet to hear any strains of mewling fiddles, down the one little strip of antique dealers, past the batten down bakery. We travel back and forth over a drawbridge topped with a giant wooden crawfish and a banner that reads, Lucien. Way down where spelling is old and the river slips silent and there is no music after nine. We spot a corrugated tin shed with a parking lot full of trucks and the neon promise of a jukebox. It's called the BNBB City Bar, and it's the scariest place I have ever seen. Baby, I say, let's just get back to the cabin. There's no live music here. You're reluctant, because you've been drinking a little and would like to drink more. You'd like to shoot the shit with some locals and see if you can get a laugh from the new joke you made up. We're on a vacation! Come on, the lake will be pretty under this moon. 
You smile for me and pat my knee. Sure thing, you say. We buy a six of Abita and cross the bridge once more, find our narrow road through the lightless fields, open the moonroof, crack a beer to share. Beards of Spanish moss wag from the tree branches, the trees becoming taller than themselves in the, head, in the high beams. The headlights make 20 feet of world exist, and we could sail off a cliff without seeing it come. Isolated houses loom like fortresses, like ancient schools, like insane asylums, and the sunken trailers with their faces pummeled and windows bandaged and cars slumped out front on three wheels. Our cabin waits down a dirt road called Lawless Tawson, a road without rules. But we miss the turn, instead continuing until the pavement ends at a fence, where we must turn left or right. You instinctively head, head right, and I say, no, baby, we passed it, pull over. I'm almost yelling, because I like to be lost, but not this lost. That's when they put the sirens on. The trees swim blue and red. A silver pickup parks behind us. Footsteps grind rocks into the dirt. He walks with a world full of time. His face at the window is young and shiny, acne on his chin. He's plain clothes and a sweat-stained tee, with a gun and a shoulder holster and a badge on a lanyard around his neck. Y'all lost. My love, we are very, very lost. We have an open beer in the car, but that's not even illegal here, is it? Illegal is the baggie of ragweed you scored in the French Quarter, now crushed in your back pocket. Being from California might possibly be illegal. And our ignorance is certainly a crime. Where y'all headed out here? Um, country cabins, you say? Or whatever it's called, Cajun cottages? <laughs> the cop shakes his head. Let me ask you something, he says. He leans closer and his badge swings in and hits you on the cheek. You flinch and I feel your fear. He said, did you maybe talk to a fella at the food and fun? The what? Gas station across the bridge. Oh, that guy. We both laughed like it's the best one we heard all night, a real thigh slapper. He was a piece of work, trying to be casual, trying to make it stick. The cop is not amused. Do you know him? No. Why did you talk to him? We were lost. Did you hand him some sort of box? Leftovers from dinner. Did he hand you money? No. Who do you know here in town? Nobody. When are you leaving? Tomorrow. Why did you come to Bro Bridge? Because we never been? No other reason. No. What kind of reason is that? <laughs> Silence. License and registration. It takes two of us to figure out how to open the glove box. You turn on the windshield wipers by accident. Rental car, you say. He reads your license and then gives you that look, the one we both expect, San Francisco. <laughs> my love, all those movies we watched on the couch are running through my head. This is how lives change course forever. This is how idiotic tourists get their comeuppance. This is how the wife gets raped while the husband watches with a bowie knife pressed to his testicles. This is how a couple ends up chained in a basement. This is how people get skinned and their skins made into throw rugs. This is how you ask, how long have you been guys been following us? It looked mighty peculiar, all them stops you was making. Now we start explaining in earnest. We both talk at the same time. The partner walks over, nods, listens, he is older, looks like a father, maybe a grandfather. He wears a uniform. Plain clothes ask, and we explain, every place we stopped, every conversation with every stranger. I grab the open map in the back seat and tell him our route from New Orleans, all of the little towns we stopped in. We keep talking, not too much, never too much, maybe way too much. He carries your license back to the silver truck. It's unmarked. Ordinary, save the rolling cherry on the dash. Whatever happened to black and white? We risk glancing at each other, our wild eyes flashing blue and red, our love a current between us. We will save each other. Plainclothes comes back and says, where do y'all say you was going? 
Cajun cottages, I say firmly, because I'm the one with the memory in this operation. <laughs> it's on a road called Lawless Tawson. There's a lake. All right, Dan, we take you back there. He hands you your license. They load into the truck and cut the sickening lights. We breathe. You use your turn signal, monitor your speed. My eyes burn from not blinking. About a mile back down the road, the truck slows to signal our turnoff, a glorified driveway with a crooked little sign tucked into the trees. The cops speed into the night. Part of me believes they will come back while we sleep. I have to hand it to them, you say. They did protect and serve. We reach our perfect pink cabin on the lake with its porch swing and frilly curtains, quaint dolls on the dresser. But it is a nervous cabin. The crack of a tree branch jerks me to the window. I can't stay in here, I say. We make a decision. I grab the towels and jackets and you grab the beer. We move quietly down to the bank where canoes wait. We debate in whispers and choose the aluminum one. You roll it over with a thump and we board unsteadily. The water takes us and we glide. There is no wind, no sound, save the dip of the paddles. Smells of algae and mulch. Now that we are quiet, crickets rub their feta wings. It is a blue bayou moon, bloated above the tree line. It has swallowed the cloud cover and the stars. A sky full of moon, bright enough to know your dear features, my love. The abrupt slope of your cheekbones, stubborn hawk nose, eyes glittering in their caves. Moonlight wraps around us. We are bound. Our paddles tickle the surface. The surface smiles and breaks. That's our love on this lake. You crack a beer and waken the resonant waddle of ducks. They burst into mocking laughter. <coughs> For we are fools, such ever-loving fools, only briefly safe from ourselves.